your, your scriptures this evening. We thank you, Lord God, for your grace and your mercy. We pray, Lord God, that you continue to watch over us and keep us in your reach. We give you the honor, the glory, and the praise, and we bless your name. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Again, yeah, good, to, good to have you all back with us here on this Tuesday, this Tuesday evening. We're still studying the book of book of Acts, and we are we are right into uh, Acts chapter uh, eleven. Uh, again, the latter part of Acts chapter eleven. The book of Acts is a is a unique uh, book. It is it is unique uh, primarily because it 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 highlight the actions of the of the uh, the apostles, formerly the disciples. And what we see in them, you know, is one thing to, to see Jesus do certain things, but it's another thing to see individuals that aren't like Jesus do the same very thing. And so we know in uh, Jesus' life here on this earth, he healed the sick, he raised the dead, he turned water into wine. I mean, he did all kind of, all kind of things. And so while it's easy to believe that Jesus did, it is another thing to believe, uh, could someone else do it? What we find in the book of Acts, we begin to see these apostles do exactly what Jesus did. So if the apostles, the followers of Jesus Christ, if they could do what Jesus did, uh, we should be able to do what Jesus did. Jesus prophesied over us. And, and Jesus said to us that, that we can do uh, greater things than what he would do. So again, you, <laughs> you, you have um, Jesus telling us this, and then we see it actually demonstrated in the, in the, in the life of, um, of, these, uh, of, of these apostles. Our lesson, for those of you that are, that are just uh, sort of uh, coming on with us, we, uh, we, we learned in chapter 10 uh, that, that the Gentile race of people uh, begin to receive the gospel message. And, you know, it's, it's, it's clear that if you're not a Jew, you are what? <laughs> you're Gentile. Gentile. Okay. <laughs> um, and that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother, another study, because uh, I can, I can, probably use the scriptures to convince us all that uh, we're also Jews, but uh, that's another real deep, uh, real deep discussion all in it, all in itself. But, um, but uh, the way the scriptures interpret it, if, if you are a mixed breed, you're considered as a Gentile. And so the original gospel message came to the, the Jewish people, and it was the Jewish people's responsibility to bring the gospel message to the Gentile. That's everyone other than, other than, a, other than a Jew. So we, we, we learn in chapter 10 that the gospel message was presented uh, to this very wealthy, very powerful individual by the name of Cornelius. And so Cornelius received uh, salvation, and Cornelius invited, uh, through the inspiration of God, invited uh, the apostle by the name of Peter, and he invites Peter to share the gospel message to his friends and his family and, uh, and, uh, and relatives. And so all of them heard the gospel message, and they all were saved. And so... Our, our, our story picks up after they all were saved and after Peter explains and, and, and preaches to Cornelius' family and they all get saved, then our, our, uh, our story tonight pick up about a church in Antioch. Now, the, the Christians were saved and then they were, they were kind of scattered abroad and they were scattered abroad uh, uh, by God's, you know, divine assignment. 
And their ultimate purpose for being scattered abroad was to take the gospel message all over the world. You see in, in, in Jesus' great commission statement, he told us to go into all the world and share the good news of Jesus Christ. And, you know, there, there is something very special about the message of, of, of Jesus Christ. You know, when I heard the, the salvation message for the very first time, I was not in a church setting. You know, I was, I was actually uh, meeting with uh, 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 one of my mentors by the name of Arthur Jackson, and he shared the message, and it was like something I never, I never heard before. Uh, I was one of those that you could say that was raised in the church, but there was something unique about uh, me in church. I often like to say that uh, my mother beat me to church. <laughs> uh, for some reason, I was, I was one of the only one of the kids that didn't want to go to church, but she would beat me to church. And uh, by the time my mother got me to church, I like to say she she was so worn out. She wasn't fit to go herself. <laughs> she was so exhausted. <laughs> she, was, she, she, she was so exhausted. All the other kids had already left to head off to church and I'm still saying, no, I'm not going or whatever. But, you know, my, my mother had, uh, had belts that, um, you know, those belts had a way of getting your uh, attention. So anyway, I, I um, somewhat raised in the church, but I never really heard the gospel message. Although I was there, I wasn't. I was there, but I was not there. You know, I was hearing, but I was not really listening. And so when I heard the gospel message for the first time, I I gave my life to the gave my life to the Lord. So our our scripture uh, our scripture picks up right at verse number 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 19 right at verse number 19 of acts chapter 11 verse number 19 at acts chapter 11 so so these these believers gave their life to the lord and then they were then they were scattered they they, they were scattered abroad the uh, the scripture said they were they're they're scattered out there uh and as a result of them being being, being, being scattered abroad they're being scattered abroad for one specific purpose, and that was to, to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. Let us let us begin begin reading right at verse uh, chapter eleven, verse number uh, nineteen. The scripture says, "Now those who had been scattered by the persecution that broke out when Stephen was killed traveled as far as." Phoenicia, Phoenicia, uh, uh, Cyprus, and uh, Antioch, spreading the word only among the Jews. See, the word was only being spread among the Jews. But some of them, however, men from Cyprus and Cyrene, Cyrene went to Antioch and began to speak to Greeks also telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. Uh, by the way, for, uh, for those of you that are, you know, heavy into, you know, geography and whatever, uh, uh, Cyrene, if you, you look uh, in at the map of Africa, you will find, uh, find Cyrene is, I think is the, the north, I think it's the north, west portion of Africa, you'll see a little sliver of, of, of an area there called Cyrene. Uh, there was, um, there was a, uh, a gentleman there by the name of Simon. He was from Cyrene and, and he was instrumental in assisting in carrying a cross of, of Jesus. Just thought I would, I would bring that out. So uh, first, Verse, verse 21, the Lord hands, the Lord hand was with them and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. A great number of people believed and turned to the, and, and turned to the Lord. 
news of this reached the church in Jerusalem and they sent Barnabas of Antioch. When he arrived and saw what the grace of God had done, he was glad and encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord with all their heart. The scripture further goes on to say, he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and a great number of people were brought to the Lord. It isn't amazing how, how, how we are seeing as a result of the persecution, the believers were scattered abroad. And while they've been scattered abroad, they begin to share their faith with others. And we almost see like a, a revival breaking out over the, over, the, over the land. Look at verse 25. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus and he looked for Saul. And when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught great number of people. The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. At Antioch. It's, it's very important um, when we look at the, the, the title Christian, you know, I don't like to be called a, um, a religious person um, because, you know, by the way, you know, <laughs> everybody's religious uh, uh, because, you know, we religious, religious, when you use the term religious, it's like somebody's practicing something where every day we, you know, we religiously brush our teeth and and we religiously comb our hair. We re religiously get dressed. I mean, it's a, it's like a, it's, it's, it's a practice. And so, when someone say, "Oh, that's the uh, religious guy over there," I, I don't want to be called a religious person. No, I want to be called a Christian. What is the significance? This is a quick question for those of you that are on with me this evening. So, get ready to turn your. Uh, to open up your mic, uh, what do you think the meaning, because this is very important and I think this is like the, uh, the centerpiece of our discussion here this evening, this is the centerpiece of our discussion this evening because this is like the first time, see prior, prior to this title being given to God's people, they were called people. In fact, this is where the church uh, got his name from. The, the early church Christians, they were called people of the way. People of the way. And, uh, and so when someone came up to them and they say, well, I'm, I'm uh, associated or I am part of the way. But in this particular chapter here, they're now given a more defined title that have significant meaning to it and is far greater than being called a religious person or some fanatic. And in fact, I, you know, I don't, I don't mind being called a fanatic for Jesus. In fact, you probably seen my shirt. I'm a Jesus freak. Okay. <laughs> hey, hey, I like to say you got. You know, you got to be a freak for something. What are you a freak for? But I'm a Jesus freak, and I'm, 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 I'm proud of it. I don't have a problem telling people I love Jesus with all of my heart, soul, and mind. I love Jesus, so I'm, I'm that, I'm that Jesus freak. But, but in this particular chapter, this particular chapter, prior to it closing out, the. Uh, the, 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 the apostle Luke uh, writes to us and tell us that, they, that, the, that the, the believers now are now being called Christian, are now being called Christian. And I want us to talk about what does, what does that title mean to you? What does that, that, that title mean to you? Because that kind of separates, that kind of separates the religious folks from the real committed 
you know, real committed, real followers of, uh, of Jesus Christ. Give me some, give me some, give me some thoughts. Uh, like we got a good bunch on here. This, give me some of your thoughts of what you think it, what does it mean to you to be a Christian? Now, everybody don't have to go up, jump in at once, but, you know, give me some conversation. Give me some conversation this evening. Go right ahead. Who want to be the first one? Go right ahead, please. So, Pastor, to me, being a Christian means that you have a relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's not about, you know, following traditions and doing things that, you know, maybe you've seen your parents or your grandparents do, but it's about having a relationship with God um, through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, that's, I love that one. Uh, can I get another one? Give me another one. I'll jump in. Um, I, I know to be a Christian uh, roughly translates to being Christ-like um, in the way I think of, of, of Jesus as being uh, the ultimate teacher. Um, I think he had a really masterful understanding of humans experience in their relationship to the to, to God and I think that be you know Christianity is us following his in his footsteps um around what we understand our 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 purpose to be on 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 this earth while we're while we're here so I I think of it as being followers um, followers of Christ awesome beautiful beautiful give me Give me another one. Give me another one. Someone give me another one. All, uh, both of these exp explanations are very great. Can I get another one? Give me another one. Uh, maybe my son will jump in and give us one. Can, can I get another one? Go right ahead. Um, I would say um, sacrifice, just sacrificing yourself to the Lord, just surrendering all of yourself to God. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Any anyone else before I go on? Anyone else? Go right ahead. Excellent. Well, these these are all these are all great, but you know the to 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 be a Christian is to be uh, someone when someone looks at you and look at your, your life and how you govern yourself, uh, they will see Christ. They will see Christ. This is why the scripture said, let, let your light so shine before men. So they will see your good works and glorify your heavenly father, glorify the, glor glorify the God that's within you. You know, one of the things that that really excites me about about Jesus and and uh, and I've 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 pledged my life uh, completely to Him is that Jesus is, is the best role model that I can find here on this earth. You know, when I was a younger uh, man coming up, I often look for figures out there that I could deem to be my mentor, my role model, whatever. And I would tell you that there are there were many that I I sized up to be a good role model for me, but but as I look closer into how they govern themselves, uh, be it outside of work or outside of church or whatever, I begin to see a lot of flaws, a lot of things. I'm like, mm, I'm not going to do that. And so I discovered that that Jesus gave us a, a, a beautiful uh, pattern of how to live. And we, we, we have to look, we have to look to him and not look to anyone else. Like, you know, th there are people in this world that will do hurt and harm to us. And it is easy for us. I wonder how many ever got caught up into this, this, this confrontation uh, uh, model called 
tit for tat. <laughs> you talk bad about me, I'm talking. I'm going to talk bad about you. You curse me, I'm going to curse you. You 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 read me from A to Z. I'm going to read you from A to Z. And we get we get caught up into this tit for tat. But when you got another another pattern that you can look at and say, uh, in fact, some of you probably never heard this before. Uh, what would Jesus do? W W uh, J D. What would Jesus do? I mean, uh, back in the uh, in the nineties, that was like very popular. WWJD people have the initials and have it on their bracelet and, and have it on their shirt to continue to remind them as they go through life, Christians, as they go through life and deal with all of these complexity issues, what would Jesus do? So before you punch somebody in the eye or slap them because they did something to you, then you pause and you begin to think about the true model, the true model. And when you look at the true model, you say, okay, if Jesus was in this situation, he would do what? Uh, we know the scripture talks about, you know, the, the, the teachings of Jesus often uh, tells us that when somebody, you know, smack us, you know, we turn the, you know, we turn the other cheek. And, <laughs> and you say, well, that's, that sounds um, a bit passive, you know? Uh, first of all, Christians are not wimps, okay? Christians are not wimps. If you thought Christians were wimp, no. But, but what Jesus was teaching us is that when we follow his pattern, actually, it, it makes us stronger. It makes us stronger, and, and, and so often, uh, when we when we take the road of Jesus, it's like we're taking the low road, but actually we're taking the high we, we're taking the high road because when we follow the patterns of Jesus, one thing that Jesus Jesus has on us is that Jesus can see the the ultimate outcome of every situation that you and I could ever deal with. He he has the insight. So sometimes we think, well, you know. Uh, she doesn't know who she's playing with. He doesn't know who he's playing with. And, and, you know, I'll knock him out. I'll do this and that. I'll do all these types of things. But we have to, we have to use great wisdom and, and look to the Lord. Look to the Lord. Chanel, you got your hand raised. Go right ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, I, I remember distinctly the, that period in the, the 90s, early 2000s with the, you know, the WWJD wristbands and I, I, we had plenty of them around the house and pencils and stuff. And I think at the time as a, as a, as a kid, I, I thought that I understood the concept of behaving in the way that Jesus would. But now that, now that I'm an adult, I think I'm able to put a different context on it. And, and what I, what I think I'm able to do now is ask myself, okay, well, what would these Jesus do? And then when I come to that answer, I have to ask why. Mm -hmm. And because I think that, I think that the way that Jesus interacted with people, because he wasn't like, Hey, I'm only going to talk to just Christians. Um, you know, he was out there talking with, you know, with, with, with people that, you know, you know, others didn't want to be associated with, or didn't want to be caught speaking to. And I think the way that he engaged others was not in from a space of judgment, not from a space of uh, I'm I'm going to you know mirror whatever whatever it is that you do to me, um, but I'm going to rise I'm gonna rise above that. And I think one on the one hand it teaches um, you know grace. I think it it, it teaches uh, also self control. Um, if we behave in a way that uh, is kind of like our uh, our our uh, in a, an impulsive, in a, an impulsive nature, we're we're giving into the flesh, like we're give we're giving into whatever kind of emotion is stirring us up. But if if we're able to take pause um, and and exercise forgiveness and understanding, not only does that support us in our in our in our obe not only our obedience but our ability to take direction and to be um, 
and to be consistent and, uh, and, and behave with, with, with specific direction, I think it also, for the, for the other person that we're in an interaction with, I think it also gives them pause. Like, well, why didn't they, that person lash out at me the way that I lashed out at them? Or why didn't they mirror this behavior that, you know, that was negative or, 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 or whatever? And I think that that opens up a conversation as to why, right? Where we can share our beliefs and, and to, to talk about uh, our faith and how that has instructed and, and is informing our actions. And I think that's how we become fishers, you know, what they say, fishers of men. Uh, so I, I think I'm able to put more context to it now <laughs> obviously not that I'm an adult, uh, but yeah, I wanted to share that. Yeah, yeah, very good, very good, very good. You know, I don't know if you ever, um, um, and uh, you know, you know, maybe this is, this is just me, <laughs> uh, but I don't know if you ever, uh, you know, tuck situations in your own hands and um, played the tip for Tad or even, even gotten physical with someone and then you, after you look at the whole thing, you 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 kind of sit back and you kind of wish you wouldn't have even gone that route. <laughs> you kind of like, okay, yeah, yeah, I beat I beat his butt, yeah, I beat her butt, and and but you sit back and you think about it, like you know, maybe I should have just backed off and and not have gone this far. And and I found myself getting into you know situations like that where. Well, I actually kind of sort of wish I would have not gone as far as I had gone. And any 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 you can uh, uh, express that because what we need to understand is that what what Jesus teachings to us, trust me, we, when we exercise it, we are exercising and utilizing powerful wisdom. Using utilizing powerful wisdom, and we are we are looking to someone that has the insight in every aspect of our lives. Someone want to comment further, go right ahead. Okay, very good. I, I, I thought we had, I thought I had, thought someone, someone had their hands up. So, so the, Christ, the, the, the scripture further, further states to us when we, when we, when we look at verse 26, uh, the latter part that the disciples were called Christian church at Antioch, and 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 Antioch is a, a part of the country where, uh, where, where, where through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit of God, they were called Christians, and and they were called Christians because their 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 life uh, uh, their life pat was patterned after the life of after the life of, of Christ. You know something that I, I've noticed and of course doing this uh this whole COVID-19 era, I think I've done more funerals uh than anything. Uh unfortunately I've done more funerals. I, in fact I have a funeral to do this uh this this coming this coming Saturday. But but I would tell you what I have learned in you know in talking with these families that have called me in to do these services, I have, <laughs> I have uh, somebody's somebody's mic uh, on. If you can just mute it real quick, uh, I have. Uh, I sit with these families, and these families be be uh, wanting me to try to uh, come up with something to say about the life of the deceased, the deceased person that connects with the word of God, that connects with the with the with, with, with the word of God. And uh, I'm, I'm hearing somebody's, uh, <laughs> somebody with a bag or whatever, you can go ahead and mute your, mute your, mute your line, that'd be great. And, 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 and so uh, when, you know, when you, when you, when you, uh, when your final days on this earth comes to a conclusion, and then you, you, you look at the overall, your overall situation and you discover, you know, that you've not done anything for Christ. So the person that's doing your doing your eulogy or what what have you, actually have nothing nothing to say uh, concerning you and um, and your relationship with the Lord. So the the the, the neat thing about being Christ-like is that your life is lining up 
with, 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 with Christ. You know, many years ago, and, and kids don't do this now, but, but many years ago, we had these, uh, uh, these model cars that boys used to work on. They would come in like a thousand pieces and you have the glue and you, you glue all of the parts together, but you continue to refer to the model. The model was the example. And Jesus is the example for us to follow. And, and, and so, many, so many times in life uh, that his example may not be appealing and his example may not be the cool thing, may, may not be the thing for, uh, you may not feel like it's even appropriate for this generation that we're in. And I know sometimes you look at it and you say, well, Lord, this stuff is antiquated. You know, we're in the 21st, we're in the 21st century. But I, I want to encourage you, if you live long enough, you will discover that the word of God is applicable for all generations until this world comes to an end. Although it may not fit, it may not appear to fit your situation, but if we just remain faithful to it, remain faithful to it, that he will show you, he will show you, you will see for your very own self, see with your very own self. The Bible further, as we continue to just kind of dig in to this whole thing about being Christ-like, being this, this, this Christian that the first believers were called in, in Antioch, we have to also know that the scripture further tells us that, that we are epistles, the Bible says, we are epistles read of men. So, you know, it is one thing to have Christian on your chest, a Christian on your back, highlighting and, and letting everybody know I'm a Christian. But what I discovered in uh, the society that we're in right now is that most people are, uh, are like they say in Missouri, you know, Missouri is the, they call it the show me state, <laughs> meaning don't preach to me let me see how you live, okay? Let me see you live it first before you can preach to me. You know, show me, show me, meaning what they're saying, I want to see an example. You know, I, I want to see an example. You know, I've, I've often uh, have had a hard time, you know, when you are, uh, you're building homes and things like that and they, they roll out these blueprints and they're like, okay, this is the bedroom, here is the master room but you can't visualize it unless you can see a model. And when we were, uh, when we were uh, shopping uh, for our home, we went into a lot of models. And then they said, well, we're gonna be building this one, which is a little better than that one, but you have to make a decision based on the plans. That was a little difficult for us because we wanted to see, we wanted to walk in, and feel the real model. And I believe those in our society today, they're looking for a model in me. They're looking for a model in you. They don't wanna hear your mouth all the time. <laughs> they don't wanna see, hear your mouth all the time because sometimes your mouth doesn't line up with what they know, what they feel a Christian, how a Christian should live. They want you to live the, live the life. So the scripture tells us we are epistles read of men that sometimes you don't even have to open your mouth. You just be a good model. You just be a good model for individuals, individuals to follow. Any, 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 further, any further comments on this? Just raise your hand or jump right in. Any further comments on that? Hearing none, seeing none. Any 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 further comments? Go right ahead. I guess I would I would just say that I think that's probably to me what sticks out the most about uh, you know interacting with other uh, Christians or, or followers of Christ is is basing you know is making um, or coming to my own conclusions based on the, the actions of others versus the words and I and I th I think that um 
that that's been like my my north star so to so to speak when i when you come into contact with people from all works of walks of life in different spaces whether it's professional uh you know in a in a kind of like recreational uh or entertainment kind of um in environment you come and come across a lot of different people who uh, maybe saying one thing um, and and then maybe behaving in an, in another way, and I think that that's that's for me always a a, a telltale sign of uh, I guess how close how close they are with with the life that we are talking about this this Christian life, and not not in a in a, in a way that I need to make make a judgment about them because that's not that's not my job, but to something that will, you know, a red flag or, or something that will cause me to pause and ask uh, and ask questions, especially, um, you know, if I'm looking to someone to be, to be a mentor or to teach, to teach me or to guide me. And I think that's a good best practice for Christians to have is, um, is to be able to be, uh, to have discernment, uh, especially when you come into contact with others or when you're interacting with others. Amen. 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 Anyone else? Anyone else? So, so our, uh, our, our lesson today, it, it, um, it, it, it comes to, a, comes to a close and, and we are becoming, uh, uh, we're now getting to the point now, now that, uh, individuals have been, been, been saved and they're growing in the grace and the knowledge of, of the truth. Now we are introduced to a gift, you know, the, the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes inside of you, it bears forth fruit. Uh, you know, one of the fruits of the Spirit is uh, a word of knowledge, you know, uh, uh, one of the gifts that God gives us through the Spirit of word of knowledge, uh, uh, gift of, 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 of prophecy, you, where you can, uh, the Holy Spirit can give you a uh, a vision, sometimes it even come in a dream, and sometimes it just comes, you know, it comes over you, and you're able to somewhat visualize and see the future. And so we are uh, we're we're introduced to that. There, there's a, there's one thing that I want to make sure you all understand. There is a there is a difference than in being a a disciple and an apostle. The, 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 the disciples were the ones that, uh, they were followers of Jesus Christ. However, when Jesus died and rose again and he came back and these disciples were told to wait up in the upper room and then they became empowered. This is where they became empowered to do the very things that Jesus did while he was on this earth. So these same individuals that we call disciples, they are now apostles. And so part of them being apostles, they are operating in the apostolic move of God. That's the, the apostolic move of God. That's the, the, the power of God and the, the ability to do greater things than what Jesus did on this earth. You know, some of you may not be aware uh, this evening, but uh, you've been commissioned to do greater things than what Jesus did. So, you know, you may want to tap yourself on the back or the leg and say, uh, young man, young lady, what are you waiting on? <laughs> well, the, the Lord did that. The Lord said that you that we would do greater things than what he has done. So, we all have to make our or, uh, make our mark in this society and do do a, do a mighty do a mighty work uh, for the Lord. You know, you have to sometimes stop and think. You know, if your day on this your time on this earth comes to an end, what would people say during your eulogy? You know, would they say, uh, she, you know, she loved the Lord and she always made her way to Bible study and and had a, some comment, you know, had something to add to it, or or she loved her church and uh, oh, she loved her pastor. <laughs> I'm just I figured I'd throw that in there. <laughs> uh, but 
but but something you know something significant about it but anyway let me let me read these last few verses so we can because we're we're about we're about out of about out of time but i do want to drop these last few uh so so they were uh the 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 uh the, the disciples were called christians first at antioch look at verse 27 during this time some prophets okay came down from Jerusalem. We know what a prophet does. A prophet foretells the future. Uh, some prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch. One of them named Archippus stood up and through the spirit, he predicted that a severe famine would spread over the entire Roman world. Okay. Again, we're, we're being introduced to a gift that the Holy Spirit provides. Give a prophecy. This, this happened during the reign of Claudius. The disciples, as each one was able, decided to provide help for the brothers and sisters living in Judea. They did, and they did, they, and this they did send their gifts to the elders by Barnabas and by Saul. And, and so just a, just kind of a, a closing to our, our 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 study this this evening again we 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 see the the believers uh, because of the prophetic word that the believers received it allowed them to reach out and help those that would be that were actually in 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 need and that's sort of the conclusion of our of our study but again the centerpiece of it all was uh, is that they were called Christians first. They were called Christians first, not a not a religious person. Some people say, ah, you you you're religious. No, 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 no. Not a real. I'm not religious. I'm a Christian. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. And if you didn't catch anything else, you're Christian. You're a follower. Of, of Jesus Christ. This is why the Apostle Paul says, follow me as I what? Follow Christ, you know, meaning, uh, you know, if if he's no longer following Christ, then you stop following him. And, you know, th that that's what happens with so many of these uh, uh, cults that pop up in, in our society. Individuals start following them and, 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 and maybe they started off following Christ, but they ventured in another direction, and many people followed them in that direction, and they got themselves into a lot of a lot of trouble. Okay, can we get some closing some closing comments before we uh, close out in prayer this evening? Any closing comments? Go right ahead. Maybe someone want to sum up sum up what we what we've shared this evening. Go right ahead. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Everybody's everybody's still mute. <laughs> hey. I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can summarize per se, per se the the lesson. But what I'm walking, I think what I'm walking away with, um, uh, I guess ref reflecting on is you know the the part that you kind of talked about, like you know what what. Uh, what will the world have to say about you when you're when you're when you're gone? Uh, and to me, I, I guess I think of that um, as like, what kind of impression will you have left? What kind of legacy will you uh, will you have left? What will people what will people say? And I think the, the you know the best way to be able to answer that is to look at your your actions here on this earth and 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 whether or not what the work that you're doing, whatever that work is, whether it's you know in the ministry or or you know, out there in the world, is it is it drawing people closer to to God? Is is the is the uh, the energy or whatever that you're putting out? Um, is it something that God would approve? That, you know, that Jesus would approve of? Um, and if it's not, then well, what you know, what are you doing? What are you doing about it? Um, and so I, I'm that's really resonating with me right now, um, especially with so much going on in our in our world, so much term, turmoil and and tragedy. Um, I find myself needing to be that beacon, that beacon of light for myself and for and for others. And so, I I'm I think that 
each of us have to have our own, our own, have to subscribe to a calling that we're going to fulfill whether there's adversity or not. And I think it's through, through those like selfless acts um, and, and, and openness to those that, that don't understand our, our way of life or our beliefs. Um, that we can be that we can be open and draw others like a magnet uh, to to us, uh, and then you know I think the obligation is for us to under to to share our understanding of of you know of of scripture and 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 what it is that we be, that we believe. Um, so I, that's kind of what I'm taking taking away from this is is what it means to be a follower and what that means, how that translates in application in the daily life that we live. You know, not just on a on a in a Bible study or or on a Sunday, but in every day. Amen. Beautiful, beautiful. You you sound like a PK. Are you a PK? I might be. <laughs> <laughs> oh bless you. Uh, for those of you that have not met my my gorgeous, beautiful first born. Uh, God bless you, uh, Chanel. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Any, any final, any, anyone else that want to share something real quick before I close you all out in prayer? It's certainly been a blessing uh, to uh, see some of your, some of your faces and to see you here sharing with us. Anyone else before we close out in, in prayer this evening? Again, want to thank you all. Any, anyone else? I want to remind you the first the first uh, Sunday in every month we have uh, our virtual uh, communion. I want to encourage you to uh, join with us. Join with us uh, every uh, every first Sunday at three p.m. for our virtual uh, communion. If you need supplies or whatever, uh, uh, just reach out, uh, call the church, and we'll try to get them get them shipped off to you. Or if you happen to be by the church, you can certainly pick them uh, pick them up. I uh, wanna encourage you all as you are tuned in to our virtual uh, services uh, on Sundays to, to share the link uh, with others. Again, one of the best things we can do to spread the message and the good news of Jesus Christ is to send it to someone. They may not be able to connect then, but they may connect a little later in the day, and that's how God can, that's how God can use each one of you in a in a great way. Again, uh, such a blessing to have all of you here this evening, and we are uh, going to gonna gonna close out in prayer, and we thank God for each of your presence here today. Okay, let us let us close out. It's certainly great to have you with us here as we have uh, brought chapter eleven. To a complete complete close, we will pick up at chapter 12. If you want to read ahead, you certainly can. We have tried to take this book uh, and, and study it very, very slowly and not just breeze and blow straight through it. And so I trust it's been uh, edify, edify, edifying to each one of you. Let us close out in prayer. Father God, we thank you so much for everyone that is on the prayer line uh, uh, on this Zoom uh, conference uh, this evening. Lord God, we pray your blessings upon them, Lord God. We pray that some of what we shared this evening, Lord God, allow them to uh, take it to their sleep this evening, meditating on the word of God. As the scripture tells that, that we will meditate on it day and night. And in doing so, the scripture promised that we will prosper people of God. So, Lord God, we, we pray that you would sink that into our spirit. We pray your healing, Lord God, over the people of God. We pray, Lord God, we pray your protection over us from this uh, coronavirus. We bind it up in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over every single life, Lord God. Go with each one of us, Lord God. We give you the honor. We give you the glory. We give you your praise. And we thank you, Lord God. But this, as well as so many other opportunities, you make available to us to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Bless the people of God. Bless the entire church family. 
our sons and our, our, our daughters and, 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 and grandchildren, Lord God. We pray your blessings and your protection over every single one of them and allow us, Lord God, to be that Christian example that others can see our good works and glorify you. Bless us now, Lord God. We ask all these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the people of God said, amen, amen, amen. and amen. Amen. God bless you all. And to all, as they say, <laughs> with one of those Christmas, and to all, a good night. God bless you. <laughs> Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bless you too, Pastor. God bless you all.